Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Adventurers, attention. Present arms. Right hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order arms. Adventurers, present arms. Because Jesus loves me, I will always do my best. Order arms. Adventurers present arms. Just can help me to be obedient, be pure, be true, be kind, be respectful, be attentive, be cheerful, be thoughtful, be thoughtful, be well. Order arms. Please remain standing for our opening song. You may be seated. Thank you. Go that way. Good morning, church. Today is a high day, amen? Welcome to Stonehill. We have a special treat for you today. It's Adventure Sabbath. Adventures, you want to say hi to church? Say hi. hi. <laughs> Amen. 
Welcome to Stonehill. We especially want to welcome our visitors, especially if it's your first time. We want you to feel welcome. And we have potluck. Encourage you all to stay for potluck. <clears throat> We're going to keep our announcements very short today because it is a special day. I think, Sierra, you had something to come up at this time. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Yes, today is Adventurer Sabbath, and we are all excited. And I just kind of wanted to tell some of you what adventures were, was, um, so that you would know what we are celebrating today. So the Adventurer Club is a Christ-centered family ministry of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, working under the guidance of the conference and the youth department. The Adventure Club is geared towards families um, with children in grades pre-K through four, fourth grade or ages four through 10. And the goal of the, of the club is to help families and caregivers to help their children to live for Jesus. And we do this by participating in meetings, we go on camping trips, um, we have leadership opportunities and we share the gospel. We also have a Bible adventure, Bible bowl quiz that we um, participate in. During the meetings, the adventurers work on curriculum that teaches them how to live for Jesus and it's divided into four categories. We have my family, my God, myself, and my world. They enjoy devotional songs and worship designed for younger children. And each of them, when they're participating in these different activities, they earn awards in their patches and pins, and you will see them located on their sashes. We are so thankful to have a church that embraces our children and, and our adventure club, and you can help the adventurers and their families, one, by praying for us, praying for all parents, um, even those not in the Adventure Club, but just praying for parents of children, and you can donate um, to our cause if you would like. Thank you. Thank you, Sierra. Uh, we want to really thank Sierra and her team who have been so diligent. It's not, uh, it takes a special person to work with our young people, amen? And so please keep them in your prayers and please support the adventurers. Uh, Kijana, I think you had an announcement. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church family. Just a quick announcement. Um, our, our new ensemble, our instrumental ensemble, will be meeting today for our first practice. After lunch, we'll meet in this, if you go through these doors, the first room on the right, we'll meet in there. So um, looking forward to seeing folks. If you forgot your instrument today or didn't bring it, please come by anyway so we just know who you are. Um, it should be a fun, short practice. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Kijana. Um, also in that theme of music, are the Keen Worship Choir from our university uh, will be with us uh, the last Sabbath of this month, March the 30th. So please invite your friends and neighbors. It's going to be a special Sabbath, and we're going to uh, be specially blessed. Uh, once again, welcome to Stonehill. This is a special Sabbath for us all. Uh, before we proceed further, let's invite the Holy Spirit to be with us today. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you for your Sabbath day. We thank you for the special blessing that we can come together and fellowship together and worship you. Please be with us today as the adventurers minister to us, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. It's now time for our children's story and lamb's offering, and our children's story today will be given to us by Lila.
Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. I am so glad to be here at church with you all today. The story I am going to tell you is based on this Bible verse. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding and all your acknowledge him and he will guide your path. Proverbs 3, verse 5. How many of you have a pet at home? Yeah. I have a dog. I love my pets. I have a puppy. Do, do your pets trust you to take care of them? Raise your hand if you can tell me what ways you, you take care of your pets at home. By playing with it a lot. By cleaning their poop. <laughs> Terry. Yes. All these things are ways we can gain and keep our pets trusting us to care for them. When we do these things for them, we usually have happy pe pets, right? Well, today I am going to tell you a story about my two dogs, Franklin and Teddy, and how for the most part, they do trust us as a family. We walk them, play with them, feed and water them, give them a nice bed to sleep in, and things like that. But one of our dogs has a problem trusting my parents. During play, during play time, because twice things didn't turn out the way he expected. You see, both you you see both Franklin and Teddy love to play ball. One day, when my dad was throwing the tennis ball uh, with them, both dogs started started running before the ball was thrown. As the tennis ball was thrown, it actually bumped Franklin in the head. Teddy kept running and chasing his ball, but Franklin immediately stopped chasing his ball, his tennis ball, and walked back to my dad and sat down. Dad said how sorry he was and petted Franklin. And tried to get him to chase the ball again. However, no matter how my dad tried, Franklin wasn't interested, and he just sat there. Poor Franklin. To this day, Franklin doesn't play with my dad. <laughs> However, for time, Franklin did enjoy playing ball with my mom until one day, you guessed it, my mom actually threw the ball and gently the tennis ball and bumped Franklin in the head. Franklin immediately stopped chasing the ball and walked back to my mom and sat down. Mom apologized to Franklin and tried to coax 
him to play again. But Alice Franklin has never joined the, the game in the game again. Poor Franklin. He has lost trust in both of my parents' throwing skills. N now, truth be told, my parents' aim is not very good. And Teddy has and Teddy has also been bumped a time or two, but somehow Teddy can still enjoy the game. Sometimes I wonder when it comes to trusting God, are we more like Franklin or Teddy? If we don't get what we want, do we stop trusting God? I hope not. You see, God knows what is best for us, and if little bumps in the road happen, we need to remember to continue to trust God and keep living our lives trusting him, to keep trying and enjoying the next day with God by our side. Now, no matter what, who knows, maybe the next day we can keep even catch the ball in midair. Keep trusting God and try again. Thanks for listening and have a great rest of your Sabbath day. Today's offering theme is for Adventist World Radio. I mean, Adventist World Radio. If you like to give to Adventist World Radio, please mark Adventist World Radio on your tith envelope. Loose, loss of, loose offering will go to your local church budget. Please bow your heads with me as we pray for a the offering. Dear God, thank you for this day. Please let us have another day of life tomorrow. Please bless the please bless the offering as we hand it around to all the people in this church. Please let please let all those who are dead please rise them up soon. Amen.
Lord, thank you for all the blessings you have given us and for protecting us. Thank you for the Sabbath day when we can come to church, praise your name, and learn more about your words. Please help those people that were not able to come to church today. Please heal them if they are sick and help them if they have problems. Please forgive us for all the sins that we have done. We praise you and we glorify your name, Lord. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. At this time, you're going to hear testimonies from our children about why they love Jesus. So can we have the eager beavers and the little lambs come first, please, and line up over here? Jonathan loves Jesus because he made my mommy and daddy, brothers and sisters, and he made my papa and nana, and he made all of the animals, and he died on the cross for me. That's why I love Jesus. Jesus because he takes care of me. I love Jesus because he makes me happy. I love Jesus because I have thank you for for God. He saves me. Jesus because he made me and my family. He 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 made me smile. Amen. Next we'll have um, our busy bee class. Sango. I love Jesus because 
Jesus gave me a good family. My memory verse Bible verse is love each other. John 15 verse 12 17. Paul. I love Jesus because he gave me a family. My favorite verse is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My name is Ida. I love Jesus because he first loved us. My favorite Bible verse is John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. My name is Lila. I love Jesus because he first loved me. My favorite Bible verse is Proverbs 17, verse 17. A friend loves all the time. A brother is always there to help you. It's very hard. My name is John Lucas. I love Jesus because he died for us. My favorite Bible verse is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Next, we'll have our sunbeam class. I love Jesus because he answers my prayers. When I pray for my family, he always takes care of us. I always kneel when I pray. Nicholas. I love Jesus because he died for me. He was nailed for me. The man died for my sins. I love Jesus because he gives me so much and he died for me. He died on the cross for our sins because he loves us so dearly. He gives me important things like food because it is important. I thank him because he is so good to all of us. Amen. I love Jesus because he died for us. He took care of us because he is the good shepherd. He is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In the beginning there was nothing, and out of one word, and I mean one word, he made the whole earth. He took great care of us. He even died on the cross, and he didn't have to do that. Amen. I love Jesus because he died on the cross for me. Jesus uh, made Nick, who is my friend, Jesus made me a long time ago in October 2010. Amen. Awesome. <laughs> Did you have one? You want to say something where you love Jesus? Okay. I love Jesus because he died on the cross to forgive our sins and gave us another chance of life. 
Amen. I love Jesus because he loved me first, and he died on the cross for me as a sign of his love. Jesus gave me a baby brother. My baby brother is strong, and I enjoy playing with him. Since I moved to Austin, Jesus has helped me meet new friends at both school and church. Jesus has always provided my family with lots of water and food. Finally, Jesus has given me a wonderful family and a play, great place to live. Amen. All right. Thank you. Did you finish? Yeah. Okay. Great. We're done. All right. That's it. Is that everybody? That's it. Okay. Thank you. Next, we will have our builders class come up. Hi, I'm Lauren Kitney. Jesus is my friend. I want to tell you why I love Jesus. First, Jesus created me. I like who I am, and I have 16 talents, I, and I love my voice. The second reason is because Jesus loves me. He's, he spreads love all around, and he, and he is always with me. The third reason is because Jesus cares for me. He, he cares for me by helping me, by being with me, and by thinking of me. I couldn't think of many more reasons why I love Jesus, but I want to leave enough time for everybody else. Hi, I'm Isaac, and I'm going to tell you how, how I love Jesus. Jesus loves me a lot. In the Bible, it says he does. He loves me so much, he died on the cross for me. He loves me so much, he created me. He helps me, too. He helps me get through when I'm struggling and helps me pass tests. He gives me stuff. He gives me food, water, and air, love, and shelter. He gives me the Bible. He even gives me things I don't need. Jesus loves and cares for me so much that, so I can love him. Hi, my name is Zoe. I am nine years old. I'm going to tell you why I love Jesus. He is really nice to me. Some examples of him being nice to me are he makes miracles, and he also gives everything I need to live, and he me, made me and my family. He also provides for me. Some example of how he provides for me are, he gives me food and water, gives me shelter, and also gives me clothes to wear. He also gave me a family. Without my family, I might not be able to survive. Some examples are, he gave me a family that can care for me. He gave me a family that can give me education and a family that can make me happy when I am sad. All of these are the reasons why I love Jesus. Without Jesus, we would not be alive. Jesus will always be with us in happy times and hard times. Hi, my name is Lauren, and I'm here to talk to you about why I love Jesus. I love Jesus because I know Jesus loves me too. Here are some reasons why. Jesus loves me because he has been there through all the surgeries. He has also seen me through all the times, all the hard times I've experienced during my life. Praying helps me and you by letting us communicate with the Lord and to let us know that we are safe with God. 
Jesus helps my family by answering my prayers and my family's prayers. Jesus also protects my family when things are not going well. These are the reasons why I love Jesus and he loves me. Thank you. Hi, my name is Adam and I am eight years old. Today I'm going to tell you why I love Jesus. I love Jesus because he left his Father in heaven and came down to this earth as a baby. And he grew up serving God and always being a good example to everyone. Then he suffered and died on the cross even though he didn't deserve to. He did it because he loves us more than we could ever imagine. And he wanted to save us and give us all eternal life. Another reason, reason I love Jesus is because he created the whole world. He created me and he gave me my mom and dad, my sister and my two little brothers. He created all the animals, flowers, trees, and many other things so that we would all be happy. He also created all of y'all. I also love Jesus because he helps us when we have hard times and troubles. When my little brother was just eight weeks old, my mom found out she had cancer. I was really scared and sad, but I prayed to Jesus to help my mom get better, and Jesus healed my mom and <clears throat> saved her life. I am so happy and thankful that Jesus saved my mom. He is a great and powerful God. He can do anything. With God, all things are possible. So that is why I love Jesus. He loves me and everyone. And he always takes care of me and you. Have a great Sabbath day. God bless you all. Hang on, one more. <laughs> Okay, Paula says that she loves Jesus because he died for her sins and because he gives her a lot of friends. Thank you. And now you're gonna hear from the um, counselors and myself. So I'll let them come first, whichever one of you want to come next. Happy Sabbath, church. Hi, my name is Ivan Yaribo. I'm one of the counselors for the Sunbeam uh, class. Um, today, we are going to share what God has done for us in our lives. Okay. So Joshua 1 verse 19, so, sorry, Joshua 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So when Sierra gave me a stack of papers to write down what God has done for me, I knew that wasn't enough. I needed to write a book instead. But don't worry, I'll be brief today. God has been marvelous and has done so much for me. I am overwhelmed thinking about it. Today, I will share my journey to this place I now call home. So the week before Thanksgiving 2017, my husband Cliff 
mentioned that he secured a job interview in Austin. And deep down, I had a feeling that our lives were about to be disrupted. Well, two weeks later, he was in Austin, and six months later, my kids and I followed suit. I was grasped with uncertainty and anxiety because I was leaving a support system of surrounding family to a place where I didn't have any family living close by. But as God reminds us to trust in him, we met a wonderful church family and friends. There are some days that I almost moved back to my comfort zone, and the thought of packing the whole house again would stop me. Well, on those tough days, I'll be, I'll be reminded that God never leaves us. Well, Philippians 4, 6 says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made to God. This is my mom's favorite verse, and she always quotes it for me whenever she senses that I'm, not, that I'm worried. So God, God has shown us love and mercy. He has been with my family through this whole transition, and he has blessed us tremendously. I have learned to trust him even more. I am overwhelmed by his power. Amen. I guess she speaks for me as a family, but <clears throat> thank you. Uh, it's hard to follow after what the kids have said. Just how much they love God and that I've been working with them has been a blessing. It humbles us. It makes me realize the pure an adulterated love that the children provide unto us. I just wanted to mention that uh, uh, I didn't know actually Eva had a long sermon as she had, but this is what I'll say. Mine will be short. But I'll use the book of Psalms 23, which is what God has given unto me, and this is what it says. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When we first moved into to Austin, as my wife has uh, stated, sometimes you never know what to expect. You never know what's coming up. But I have to thank God that he gave me the family that I have right now. He gave me the best family that any man can wish for or any person can ask for. We've been through some sunny days and we've also been through some cloudy days. We've had times of joy in my family, in my household. And also, we've had some days when it's a little bit cloudy. We've had plenty, and also we've had scarcity. But one thing I'll say is God has strengthened us from every challenge that we have gone through as a family. Every blessing that we've gone through has made us better every day. This is the opportunity, I guess, for me to also introduce my family since we joined Stonehill. And I'll say this. This is how I'll introduce my family. This is my wife, Eva. And I'll say something why she's the pillar of our family. She is amazing. She's understanding, intelligent, and beautiful. 
we've worked through, we worked together through this journey for the last 10 years, and every memory, I'll hold on to it and cherish. To that, God has also given us three wonderful children, Lauren, she's a bold and daring daughter, who is loving and always willing to help, and is always assisting us with a little baby. Caleb, who was up here, he's a gentle soul, very meticulous on what he does. When I get home, he's the first one to run to the door and give me the best hug that any dad can wish to have. I'll not forget CJ. He keeps me young, keeps me going each and every day. He reminds me the importance of paying attention. If you've seen me, sometimes we're always running and I'm always trying to hold on to him because any minute I let him lose, he will be at the pulpit. So he might be the next pastor. But that is my family. But more than that, when you first joined Stonehill, it's amazing that God already put the family that any person could have wished for to, whenever you come to a new city. Walking through the door the first day, I tried to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Cliff, and when I first joined the children's church, and the first thing somebody told me, no, there's another Cliff over here. And I said, okay, I guess God made the way already. And immediately I said, oh yeah, meet my son, CJ. And they tell me, no, there's another CJ over here. <laughs> and I said, okay. And I said, okay, meet my daughter, Lauren. And they tell me, no, there's already Lauren over here. And I said, okay, it cannot be that there's a Caleb then. And I said, okay, I have my son, Caleb. And they tell me, no, there's a Caleb over here already. <laughs> and I just kept on going and I say, you know what? This is maybe the place we need to be. We've been to different churches. But since we joined Stonehill, we've enjoyed every moment. We've enjoyed the lunches, the times we've spent with different people, the men's ministry, the different ministries that are in this church. We do not take them for granted. It's been a blessing, and I'm proud and happy to be a Stonehill member and to work very closely with your children. Thank you. Hello. Happy Sabbath to everyone. Uh, my name is Neil. I'm the counselor for the Busy Bees. Yeah. So um, it's my first time to be a counselor for children. And uh, it was really a challenge at first, actually. Um, to tell you honestly, I always tell my wife, Oh no, it's adventure time again. What am I going to do? <laughs> I always like Friday, Friday nights, like I can't sleep. What am I going to do? Okay, so uh, first day, I would like to thank Cynthia for helping me because I could, I don't really know what to do. It's my first day and I'm, uh, I'm not really a, uh, a born Adventist, so I really don't know uh, uh, adventures. So that's when I uh, had the good picture of this uh, five kids that I'm handling, how it works. So by the second time we met, or before that second time, then I got really stressed because I already saw the kids and how they, how they, uh, um, we do the, our lesson. But as time goes along, uh, in a way, really God helped me to go past these lessons because um, I really don't know what to do. So uh, the verse that I uh, have for you is, 
um, found in Philippians uh, 9.13, uh, this is one of the verse that uh, I really hold on to because um, kids is not really my forte, you know. I'm not really into dealing with kids too much, but even though that's the case, um, this verse helped me a lot. Uh, it's, it's found in Philippians 4.13. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And definitely, throughout the... Um, our lessons, as time goes by, uh, it became easier. And all of a sudden, the kids kind of uh, were greeting me all the time, saying, Hey, Mr. Neo, how are you? It's like, okay, I think I'm doing a good job then. It's like, <laughs> so uh, that encouraged me a lot, even though I know it's just a small thing for kids to greet me, but like, Ah, okay, so thank you, Lord, for that. So uh, it works both ways for us. I'm teaching them something, but definitely uh, they're teaching me something as well, which is, uh, I think, the lesson for me. That's why I was called to this um, ministry. So I thank God for this uh, opportunity, and uh, God bless you all. for the short people. <laughs> so you guys know me already. I'm Lori Chaudero. I am the counselor for the builders, the third graders this year. And I just, I'm really happy and excited and proud to see all the kids up front sharing about why they love Jesus. That just makes me so happy. Um, you know, like, when's the last time we had a bunch of adults up here lined up to do that, you know? <laughs> Think about that, guys. <laughs> So um, I'm excited to see our next generation of adventurer leaders. So exciting. <laughs> and also all of the new children and the new families involved in the program. And you can see that God is doing some really great things um, through the adventurer ministry. So, you know, we're up here you know, doing the same things the kids are doing. And that's the kind of the model of the adventure. So I'm going to be up here telling why I love Jesus. <laughs> so one of the best reasons I can think of why I love Jesus is, you know, God, we have, we serve a God who really truly cares about us. You know, like, um, I've grown up as an Adventist um, all my life. And, um, you know, I've never really dabbled in other religions or anything. Some people, you know, do. They explore other religions. But um, I've had a few friends that were like uh, Buddhist or Hindu. And, um, you know, I've never ever heard them say that they have got a God that really cares about them. And I know there's some Christians that, I don't know if there's a whole lot of them still, but that used to believe that, you know, God made everything, yes, but then he just like abandoned it to just play out however it wanted. But you know, that's not the God we serve. That's not my God. My God is a God that created this universe and this world with a purpose. The first chapter of the Bible, you know, tells us God made human beings to be in his own image. And, um, you know, he, he wanted us to reflect his goodness and to freely serve him. And, you know, in, it tells us in First Peter um, chapter 1 that, he already had a plan in place in case, just in case, you know, plan, <laughs> plan B if something went wrong. So he, he knew, he knew. He, he cared about us and he had a way, to, he made a way for us to come back to him. And I know there's some people, you know, we all experience hard times. And some people think that if there's a God that doesn't, that permits all this suffering and he permits us to go through all this hard stuff, that he really doesn't care about us. But you know, just because God's not doing exactly what at the exact exact moment that we want him to do it, doesn't mean he doesn't care about us. It, it just means we're being impatient, <laughs> right? Come on, amen. <laughs> you know. Um, so, you know, God's, God cares about us. 
He, he keeps his promises. He's, he's not slow to keep his promises. It's be, he's being patient with us, right? He wants all of us to come to repentance. And um, I read this verse in Psalms this past week, and it's Psalms 56, verse 8, and it says, You number my wanderings, put my tears into your bottle. Are they not in your book? God sees each tear we shed, and he knows exactly what's happening in our lives, and he feels that because he sent Jesus to live here as a human being just as we do. God doesn't leave us there to suffer when we have those tears. The, the Psalms say, the Lord preserves the simple. I was brought low, and he saved me. Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. He does not leave us languishing. He sympathizes. He reaches out to lift us up. And another thing that I really like about the God I serve, that we serve, is that he tells us the truth, right? I know, like, <laughs> truth isn't always popular because we don't want to hear it because it shows when we're doing something wrong, right? But we have a, a God that's true to us, that, that he preserved his word for us to, to be able, for, for us to be able to rely on. And that's something that I really appreciate. And, you know, I love God for that. I mean, you know, you can think of in your life when you have relationships with your kids, with your parents, with your whoever, your friends, your boyfriend, girlfriend. Um, and, you know, people lie, right? <laughs> they do. I probably lie too, right? <laughs> probably. <laughs> um, but, you know, when you think about those times, I feel like when somebody lies to me, I'm like, just tell me the truth. Yeah, I might be mad for a little bit, but I really prefer the truth. Well, we got a guy that tells us the truth the first time around, right? <laughs> um, so, you know, I really, I'd love that about our God. And I, I want to just um, echo the words of Cliff and say that, you know, he does, he cares about us. And he, he really provides for us through those hard times. And he's there with us through the good times as well. And that's why I love Jesus. And I want you guys to think about, you know, what would you say? What, what reasons would you give why you love Jesus? Oh, goodness. Um, it has been an honor and a privilege. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Sierra Park, Adventure Director, and it has been an honor to serve in this role. Um, I never thought that I would be standing here. Um, I didn't grow up in the Adventist church. My husband Clifton did, and when I went to church with him early on and saw this wonderful group of young people and adults and young adults serving, and wearing a uniform, it was like so exciting. I was like, oh, I want to be a Pathfinder. <laughs> but I was too old. <laughs> and I never thought about like serving as, you know, the, the staff or as the director. But I thank God he knows what, what we need even before we know we need it. And as I mentioned before, um, um, this is a family ministry and my whole family has been involved. Clifton is my husband. Shea, Sienna, and CJ are our three children. And I'm so thankful to all of them for the love and the support that they give to me um, and that we can do this ministry as a family. It has truly been a blessing and an honor. And as everyone else mentioned before, you know, it hasn't always been good times. Um, we moved to Texas in 2016 from Ohio. And um, before we had our three beautiful children, we lost two children. And so as I reflect on what God is having me doing right now, he's given me all these children and more. <laughs> and so I just praise and thank God for that. I want to thank my amazing staff. Um, Lori has been amazing. She has taught me everything that I know, and I just want to thank her. <laughs> and I want to thank the rest of the staff for all that they do. They really love Jesus, and they teach our children to love Jesus. My favorite 
um, Bible verse that helps me to get through anything that I'm going through is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I know now lately, you know, in the secular world, and I found myself also doing and saying it at some points, I can't, you know, just like going through something, something's happening, oh my God, I can't, I cannot do this. Um, but when I think about this verse, and I actually have it on a plaque on my desk at work, um, because yes, also I work full time, I'm a prosecutor for Travis County, so having three children, a full time job, and doing a ministry in the church is very hard. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so when you guys see me running around and I'm kind of frazzled, I am. <laughs> it's a lot. And so um, I try not to get emotional up here. Because as I mentioned before, this is a family ministry. And I look out into the congregation and I see all the parents and just know that I know and the rest of us know that it's hard. It is a challenge. God gave us his word, his Bible, that we can lean on, but it's not a parenting manual, right? It doesn't give us step-by-step -step instructions for all that we go through on a daily basis raising children. And so I'm so thankful that we have the adventure ministry, that we can learn about Jesus, teach our children about Jesus, and walk alongside other parents um, as we go through this journey. I love seeing the kids. One of the Bible verses that we um, Think about any time you're dealing with children, even as a parent, is Proverbs 22.6. It tells us to train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So we as Christian parents are planting seeds in our children's lives of the love of Jesus, and we hope when they're older that they will remember what we have taught them and that they will make their own decision to follow him. I love seeing these kids. I've been working with them. Um, for almost the past year now, and I love seeing them as they're going through the meetings and the different programs and the activities and just seeing their love and their passion for Jesus. They are amazing. They inspire me. Them, along with my own children, inspire me to keep going, to keep pressing forward. Um, I'm also thankful for the parent community that comes along with that. So when the children are interacting in their different classes, the parents, we're talking, we're sharing about our struggles as well as our praises. I mean, we laugh as well. These kids, they do some amazing things and say the most incredible things. So I'm thankful for that. Um, it has been challenging, but I'm so thankful for God for allowing me to be able to plant seeds in our children's lives because this is what it's about. Our life here on earth is temporary for our eternal life. So all that we do, the most important thing is learning about him, accepting him and loving him. And so we just ask for your continued prayer and your support. Thank you. And we're gonna have the kids come up, all the kids come up for our closing song. I guess we're starting to kids.
Just before we pray, can I ask you to give a hand to our director, our staff, our kids? Thank you. I have to admit I was a bit worried hearing some of the staff say they are not kid people, <laughs> Nino. But I am glad to see how God has used even the ones that feel that they're not equipped. A great lesson for each and every one of us. If we are willing, God will use us. And I thank all the staff for what you've done to help our kids prepare for the kingdom. Thank you, Nino, you included. <laughs> <laughs> Bow your heads with us as we have a word of prayer. Most gracious Father in heaven, we are so grateful to celebrate, to worship, to honor you with our group of adventurers here today. I thank you, Lord, for a group of committed staff who's willing to spend endless hours working with them, teaching them about Jesus, preparing them to one day meet Jesus face to face. Lord, it is my prayer that we as a congregation can continue to support, get involved, and ultimately, Lord, by our example, our contributions, help these programs that will prepare not only them, but us. As we teach, we will learn and experience your love for us also. Bless us now, Lord, as we go our separate ways, and we look forward to meeting up with you again here soon in the next week. For this, Lord, is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.